Hello class and welcome to this video on how to do the basics in logic and that is get a couple of audio um, tracks into a new project, apply some compression and some EQ and then bounce that track out and then send it off to me, your teacher. All right, so let's start here. I have my two tracks uh, that um, I had from the email. If you are on a Mac, then they will automatically go um, into iTunes, and then you can just take um, you can take it from iTunes and then just simply drag it onto your desktop. That's the easiest way that I've thought to do it. Let's go into Logic. All right, so Logic may or may not open up the last session, in which case you just go up to New. Yes, close that. And here I have a new session. So the first thing it does is it brings this pop-up where it asks me, do I want to add a, a track and what kind of track do I want? Well, I want an audio track and right here I want two tracks. So I'm gonna create those. There we go. Uh, it, it pops up a lot of windows. You don't need this one open, at least for the moment. The thing that you will need to do is to be able to toggle between what's called your environment right there and your mix window. So you've got your edit window and you've got your mix window right there. And so that, that button comes in handy. Uh, also, if you ever have questions about what any of this stuff is, if you hit that question mark thing, all of this stuff will light up and then you can search around logic um, and this will answer your questions better than I can. But the next thing I'm going to do is going to go over here. This is my audio bin. I'm going to go to media. Actually, I'm going to go to all files. And then I'm going to go down to my desktop. In theory, there we go. Alright, and then right here I have my raw guitar. I'm just going to drag and drop until it's to the very beginning and then I'm also going to drag and drop my vocal until it's at the very beginning. Okay, that should bring stuff in. Uh, actually, I think I want my vocal above my guitar. That's just my preference. Cool, and you can do that by just grabbing the track right there and moving that up and down. All right, now I'm going to go into my mix window. Oh, you can see right here I'm actually getting input from my voice, and that is because I have the input set on one and two and I don't want that. So let's start playing and see what we hear. Ah. So I'm gonna bring both my faders up to zero. That's a good place to begin. Okay. And now we are, oh, I should explain what I'm pushing to start and stop is the space bar. So that starts it. That stops the playhead, and the playhead is this thing right here, uh, passing over the audio track. And then if I press return or the enter key, it'll take me back to the top. Those are very useful to know. So now here I am, I can actually begin the process of mixing. And going off of our class last week, the first thing that I want to worry about is EQ. The second thing I want to worry about is compression. I'm going to start with my vocal. Now these were recorded at the same time, so there's a little bit of bleed between the microphones. There's some guitar in the vocal and there's some vocal in the guitar. So if I take care of the vocal, which I think is the more, more important part, the guitar part will be easier. The first thing I'm gonna do, here's another thing you'll need. The command uh, key and the left arrow will make the waveform more condensed. The command, let me go into this other one so you can see it very well. Command left, command right, stretches and condenses. And then if you want to see the waveform better, command down makes it taller, command up makes it shorter. I find myself using those a lot. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here where the numbers are. And if I hold down, click, and scrub over shoop, like that, it makes what's called a cycle or a repeat section. Because often with mixing, you're going to be listening to a lot of one segment over and over again, and you don't want to have to keep going back. So if I press spacebar now, we get there, we get there. 
Uh, let's make it a little shorter so you can see what the what the thing is doing. Make this bigger. That's command uh, right arrow. We so this just there, loops. We get there, don't be last. And when it gets to the end, the left there, left there, you get the, the past. And somehow, yep. We get there. So then if I press spacebar to stop, it'll stop wherever, but it'll always start at that particular section. So I'm just going to start at the beginning of the vocal. We'll go a little bit farther out. And now I'm going to go back to my mix window, click on EQ right here. And this brings up my equalizer, which we looked at last time. And so I'm going to do a little bit of stuff and tell you what I'm doing as I, as I do. Moving fast We get there, we get there, don't be last So the first step is to dump all the stuff you don't want in the low end because remember the human voice, the male voice, there's not much going on um, w underneath 100 hertz, which remember that's a, that's a low frequency. So the bass or the kick drum would live there, but I'm not a bass or a kick drum. So we're going to use this uh, curve, which is a high pass also known as a low cut filter, same thing. And I'm going to bring that up. I'm gonna turn off my analyzer. And I'll keep it on for your sake. Oftentimes when I'm mixing, I like to turn off the analyzer Moving fast. so that I don't see any of the frequency energy because I want to use my ears. I don't wanna trust my eyes when I mix. I have to trust my ears. But for your guys' sake, I'm gonna turn this back on so you can see what's happening. Moving fast. So you can see there's not much down here. We get there, but every get now there, and then there is something. Be last. So that's the first step. Nothing left there. Now I'm gonna skip this one. This is called a shelf filter, which is a little bit different of a curve. Um, but I'm not I'm not gonna use a shelf. I'm gonna use this yellow guy. So I'm gonna grab the dot. And remember, this is boost sweep cut. I'm gonna boost a frequency until it sounds awful, and that's gonna let me know, oh, that's a resonance happening somewhere. Kind of a medium wide Q. And again, the Q is the width of the frequency bell curve. The dB is the gain. Am I making it louder or softer? And then the frequency, that's at 200 hertz right now, is it a low frequency or is it a high frequency? I'm gonna start with my yellow one, find something ugly, and then take that down by at least 3 dB, because remember, it has to be down by at least 3 dB to make a difference. Moving fast, we get there, we get there, don't be last. Nothing left there, left there but the past. Ooh. So you can hear the guitar is kind of tubby and, and awkward, and the, the vocal as well. So I'm gonna drop that down. Moving fast. We get there, we get there, don't be loud. All right, now, it would probably be a good idea to look in the range of the next octave, which would be near about a doubling of that frequency. So 192, let's call it 200, because I don't want to do more math. Uh, so it would be around 400 that I'm looking for that next octave. Moving fast, we get there. Get there, don't be last. Nothing left there. Ooh, left. Hear that honkiness? Ugh. More resonance. We don't need that in our lives. So we're gonna take that out. Moving fast. We get there, we get there, don't be last. Nothing left there, left there. Okay. So then I'm gonna grab. Oh, did I grab the wrong one? Ah, that's all right for now. Okay. So now I'm gonna grab another. Uh, band of EQ and I'm going to go to the next octave up so from about 400 well that's gonna probably be 800 let's see what happens moving fast we get there we get there don't be last nothing left there left there but the past yep and somehow would I miss cool so we're taking out some of that tubbiness and the mid-rangey and the low end and remember, we want to start from the bottom and work our way up, just like I'm doing, because the fundamental resonance is down here, and then the harmonics move up and up and up. So if we start over here, we're not really hearing the fundamental, and that means that we won't have solved our problem, because once we solve this problem, it starts to 
um, it starts to unmask other problems that are above it. So you always start down low and move up because you might find that some of your upper problems get fixed by taking stuff away down here. Moving fast. All right, now, since I've done 800, I'm gonna do one more band, probably around 1600. Moving fast. We get there, we get there, don't be last. Nothing left there, left there but the past. And somehow what I'm missing is the present. So let's listen to without the EQ and then with the EQ. Moving fast. We get there, we get there, don't be last. Nothing left there, left there but the past. And somehow what I'm... Mm -hmm. Better. Let's see what happens if we do the same trick with the guitar. Moving fast. We get there, we get there, don't be last. Nothing left there, left there but the past. Tubby 200. Somehow what I'm missing is the presence. But the wind, you can't see beginning or the end. Moving fast. Okay, let's listen to those together. Moving fast. We get there, we get there, don't be last. Nothing left there, left there but the past. Okay, getting better. Let's add the compression. Because remember, the EQ was a smart volume knob that could affect one of the frequencies or one part of the frequencies that we're interested in. The compression is a smart volume knob that can move in time. And that we're going to find if we go, oh, sorry, I should explain this. Audio effects, if I go just down below channel EQ and click that light gray to make it dark gray, that's going to open up a new spot for me to put in an effect. And these are all effects, which if you're really interested, you can check out what all of this crazy stuff is. But we want dynamics, compressor, stereo. That brings this up. The first thing, I don't like this about Logic. Auto gain off, auto off. I'm gonna set my attack and release fairly quick because it doesn't matter for our purposes just yet. I'm gonna put my ratio around three plus, um, but prob probably not more than five or six. And then I'm gonna take my threshold down, no makeup gain yet. And then I'm going to play my track and bring up my threshold until it start to does start to does something it starts to do something uh, on the meter and again this meter is gain reduction how much it's reducing the gain and I want between 3 to 5 dB because remember it takes 3 dB at least for it to make a difference that we can detect moving fast we get there we get there don't be last nothing left there left there but the past and somehow what I'm missing is the present okay but the wind good and on those loud ones but the wind that's fine because that's what I want to tame anyway so now I'm gonna give back what I've taken away with the makeup game moving fast we get there we get there don't be last Nothing left there, left there but the past And somehow what I'm missing is the present But the wind Good. And the effect of that should be that we have a little bit more present, a little more in your face. It should feel closer without, fe the vocal should feel closer to you without being so close that it's uncomfortable. That's the point of compression is that it 
by smoothing out the sound, you can bring it up f closer and make it feel like that vocal is just sitting right in front of the listener. That's what we're after. Moving fast. We get there, we get there, don't be. So now to listen to the difference, I'm gonna just solo the vocal. And what I'm gonna do is something called level matching. So I'm gonna watch the readout from um, this right here on the DB. First, let's do it without. Moving fast. We get there, we get there, don't be last. So we peaked around 14. So now what I'm gonna do is turn this on and I'm probably gonna be a little bit louder, so I need to take this down to where it's gonna be peaking at 14. Moving fast. Oh, maybe not. We get there, we get there, don't be last. Let's Moving fast. We get there, we get there, don't be last. Moving fast. We get there, we get there, don't be last. Because what I don't want is I don't want to be hearing louder because the ear always hears louder as better. Yes, it's going to get a little bit louder, but what I want to do is I want to know if I've made an improvement in the sound, not just made it louder and therefore I think, oh, that sounds better to me. So now, uh, let's play this again. Moving fast. We get there, we get there, don't be last. Okay, so that was with compression. Let's go without compression. And take it back up to zero. Moving fast. We get there, we get there, don't be last. On the second half of that lyric, and we get there, we get there, it sounds like he's far away, he being me. So I'm gonna take this down, put on the compression, and tell me if you can hear the difference. Moving fast. We get there, we get there, don't be last. It seems like now my vocal is staying closer. It feels like I'm staying closer to the mic because this smart volume knob is going up and down and up and down and making sure that uh, it's smoothing out the highs and the lows. Therefore, when I turn it up, it's all going to feel more present and in your face than it was before. That's the point of compression. Moving fast. We get there, we get there, don't be last. Okay, let's go over to the guitar and do the same thing. So I need another compressor. Take off auto gain. Make our attack and release short for now. Take our threshold down to nothing. Our ratio at least to three. And now I'm gonna play the guitar and start to bring up the threshold and until it does something. Moving fast. We get there, we get there, don't be last. But the left there, left there, but the past. And somehow what I miss is the presence. But the wind. All right, now I'm going to give back what I've taken away. Moving fast. So the other thing is there's a lot of guitar in my vocal, so it might sound kind of weird by itself. It does sound weird by itself, but when they're together, it's not so bad. Moving fast. We get there, we get there, don't be last. Nothing left there, left there but the past. And somehow what I'm missing is the present. But the wind You can't see beginning or the end All right, and the big question is, is it better than it was? That's, that's really the big question you have to ask and answer is, does my EQ sound better than it did? And does it sound better with, with compression than without it? So here it is by itself. And let's level match the whole thing. So I'm gonna listen to the whole thing and watch this readout on the stereo out. And what that means is, these two tracks are both being dumped into this guy. It's like the garden hose. Uh, this is the, the end result that's going to come out through your ears when you bounce the track. This is whatever's on this track is going to show up uh, in iTunes or whatever um, media player you have. So let's look at the overall level. Moving fast. We 
get there, we get there, don't be last. Okay, so on last, I, I wound up at 13.6. So now, with both of these on, here's a trick. If I go shift, click both, I can make both go on like that. So now, let's play it again. Moving fast, we get there, we get there, don't be last. Actually, that's a, look at that, that's about pretty near the same level so this is a good level match. You can hear you can hear the difference without hearing a huge difference in volume. Let's listen to without it and then with it. Moving fast. We get there. We get there. Don't be last. Nothing. Moving fast. We get there. We get there. Don't be last. Nothing left there. Okay. So what I'm hearing is better clarity because we've taken out the low end in the vocal so it's not quite so tubby and it it seems like in the first one without the eq and the compression that the low end of the guitar was becoming too much of a star compared to the vocal and it's all about the vocal it's all about the words that are being said so i want that to come through the guitar is the helper it's not the star so let's listen for a little bit longer maybe i'll go to a different spot and Listen to it without and then with. Here we go. And somehow what I'm missing. Let's jump over to a chorus. Can only feel the moment you are in. And Father, you invite us to your presence. So I'm gonna fight to find the rest. And meet the maker of my soul to bless. And come into the Father's confidence you Can only feel the moment you are in And Father, you invite us to your presence So I'm gonna fight to find the rest And meet the maker Whoop. All right, I think I made a mistake, which is good, so you can, you can learn from my mistakes. I think my compression setting was a little bit too loud for the chorus. My verse is pretty quiet, right? So I, I set my compression level um, based upon how loud my vocal was when I was in my verse. But look at the chorus. I bet these numbers are different now. So I'm going to fight to find the rest And meet the maker of my soul to bless So I think I've overdone it because that is a little bit too much um, and you can start to hear the compressor. Sometimes that's a really good thing, but in this case, I want the compressor to be more or less transparent. So I'm gonna fight to find the rest And meet the maker of my soul to bless And come into the Father's confidence Behold the wonder of his rest That's better. Uh... Due diligence, let's check the uh, guitar. So I'm gonna fight to find the rest And meet the maker of my soul to bless And come into the Father's confidence Behold the wonder of... Yeah, it's not doing much because, again, the guitar is not that loud. One more time with everybody in. So I'm gonna fight to find the rest and meet the maker of my soul to bless And come into the Father's confidence Behold the wonder of his rest There's a place Yep, I like that better. All right, here is your last step. All right. Make that shorter. Now, here are some of the, the tricky, <laughs> the funny things about uh, Logic. So here is my track. But what Logic does is this. Logic has this end marker at the end, <laughs> end marker at the end, that you notice it's given you a lot of room because Logic does not want to cut off your song before it's time. So after the end of this song...
All right, we get down to nothing, but the song keeps going. Well, if you bounce it, and by bouncing, I mean um, taking these tracks and putting them into one track that will come out as left and right, that's stereo, left and right speaker, into your ears um, through iTunes, well, this, you're going to get a couple of seconds or more of nothingness. And we don't want that because we want it to end when it ends and be nice. So I'm going to take my end marker and take it to right about there. I could even listen to the end of my track. Right there. We'll do one little editing thing. And now I'm actually going to chop that part off. So you see that it's highlighted. I'm going to press Command T and that chops that off. Delete it. I'm going to do the same in the exact same spot. Command T slices it right where the playhead is. And again, that's the playhead. And then I'll delete that. Okay, so that's where my song ends now. Now I'm going to bring my end marker right up to it so that that's when the song really ends. Let's go back. Okay, so this, now when I bounce this, it'll be exactly as long as I want it to be. In fact, if I really wanted to get uh, particular, I would probably go and cut off the first part to make it um, so that when it starts, it's, it's right on the mark. But here's what I do next. Press Command B. That is the bounce button. Uh, PCM, that's a higher quality um, file. MP3, obviously that's a lower quality file, but that's exactly what we want because you have to email this to me and the large uh, file won't email. So you're going to press MP3 and check off the other boxes. Press OK. We need to give it a title, which is rest um, EQ and comp version. Why not? Press bounce. And so it's putting those two tracks into one stereo track. You can see there it's converting to MP3. And then if you're on a Mac in Logic, it will make the iTunes thing bounce saying, hey, you have a new track. You have a new song in your iTunes library. So we'll give that a second. And job done. So there we are. That is how you start from having the tracks that were emailed to you, make them pretty with EQ and compression, and then bounce out the track. That is what you will send to me. So let's minimize that. So then you take this guy, put that on your desktop, go into your email, attach that as a file, and send that back to me. And then I will be able to tell that you have made a better version than I gave you. All right, have at it.